Pope Francis, the Jesuits, the two Pope prophecy, and the last Pope prophecy of St. Malachi. That will be the subject of this video. We'll start off with the fact that St. Francis is the first Jesuit Pope to ever be Pope of the Catholic Church. And a few interesting facts I want to mention about the Jesuits. Here's a quote from Marcus de Lafayette, a French statesman and general who served in the American Continental Army under the command of General George Washington. And he said, quote, it is my opinion that if the liberties of this country, the United States of America are destroyed, it will be by the subtlety of the Roman Catholic Jesuit priests, for they are the most crafty, dangerous enemies to civil and religious liberty. They have instigated most of the wars in Europe. One more interesting fact about the Jesuits to back up that claim is that the Jesuits were serially expelled from the Portuguese Empire, the French, the two Sicilies, Malta, Parma, the Spanish Empire, Austria, and Hungary. They were kicked out of a large portion of Europe during the 1700s. Now, Pope Benedict stepped down in February of 2013, and it was the first time a pope had done that since the 1400s. So having two popes alive during this time period was a very interesting thing. Of course, as we know, Pope Benedict just passed away right at the end of this last year, at the beginning of this year, 2023. And it's interesting because there's actually a prophecy from 1885. It's a Catholic prophecy from Anna Catherine Emmerich, again, about 150 years before Pope Benedict even stood down. And this prophecy is of two popes and it reads, I also saw the relationship between two popes. I saw how baleful would be the consequences of this false church. I saw an increase in size. Heretics of every kind came into the city of Rome. The local clergy grew lukewarm and I saw great darkness. I see that the false church of darkness is making progress and I see the dreadful influence it has on the people. The Pope and the church are verily in so great a distress that one must implore God night and day. So again, a very interesting prophecy to hear considering 150 years after that prophecy was given to Anne Catherine Emmerich, that that's pretty much exactly what is going on within the Catholic Church and Rome at the moment. Which leads us to another Catholic prophecy, the prophecy of the 112 popes and of Saint Malachi, which is an interesting prophecy. And prophecy is definitely still for our time as told to us in 1 Corinthians 14, 1. And that says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So prophecy is definitely a spiritual gift that still goes on and something that wasn't just intended for the early church in the book of Acts. And now the prophecy of Saint Malachi, the prophecy of the 112 popes, with, which gives us a pretty accurate description of multiple popes leading up to what is said to be the last pope, which would be Pope Francis, he fits this category, and, well, and he is the 112th Pope. And this happened to Saint Malachi when he traveled from Ireland to Rome. And when he got to Rome and saw how much luxuries and how much gold and array was arrayed at the Vatican, he became furious to see how luxurious the church was there. And he went off outside of the city and looked upon the city, which is known as the City of Seven Hills, gave the prophecies of every pope from that time up until the last pope. And some of these prophecies have pretty accurate descriptions. For instance, the prophecy given about Paul VI, the prophecy written about him was flower of flowers, and his coat of arms when he became the pope had three flowers on it, the symbol of the French monarchy. The prophecy of the pope that ended up being John Paul II was from the labor of the sun. And he not only was born during a solar eclipse, but he was buried during a solar eclipse. And many of the other prophecies are strikingly accurate in a similar fashion. Which leads us to the last prophecy, the prophecy of the 112th Pope. And St. Malachi's final prediction in full is, in the final persecution of the Holy Roman Church, there will reign Peter the Roman, who will feed his flock amid many tribulations, after which the seven-hilled city will be destroyed and the dreadful judge will judge the people. The end. So this prophecy tells us that many tribulations will come upon the church because of what is going on within it and how it's being run. And it will actually be destroyed, all of Rome, through this destruction and corruption that, had been, that has been brought on by the Catholic Church, which again is a striking resemblance to what we see in the very last day's prophecy in the book of Revelation in chapter 17, talking about mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. The woman drunk with the blood of the saints, with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And what do we see in Revelation 17? In verse nine, it tells us, 
Here is the mind which has wisdom, the seven heads or seven mountains on which the woman sits. And what is the only city upon the entire world known as the city of seven hills? It's not some obscure city, it's not some random city, it just so happens to be Rome and Vatican City, the only city known as the City of Seven Hills. We're also told many other things about Mystery Babylon, that it's decked in gold and covered in scarlet and purple, other things that only are attributed really to the Vatican and the Catholic Church. I mean, they, they glory in these things, it's like a main focal point of what they do. So when we look into all of these different factors, the factor that we had a prophecy of the two popes, which seemed to be fulfilled. We have Pope Francis being a Jesuit, which has a very, <laughs> they have a very strange history, a history that is not so popular with the general public, even being kicked out of entire nations, a large portion of Europe. And then we have these prophecies, St. Malachi, the, the prophecy of the 12 popes. He even mentions the seven hills in his prophecy and Revelation tells us Mystery Babylon will have the same city of seven hills covered in scarlet, decked in gold, scarlet and, red, scarlet and purple. I mean, it's pretty amazing to see. So as we look at the world stage to see who could fulfill these last days, big figures, the false prophet, the antichrist, it seems as if, well, it really looks as if the Vatican will fulfill the Mystery Babylon aspect of this. And if the person leading that, of course, would be Pope Francis, Tying in with all these other prophecies and everything else we are seeing, it really looks as if maybe that false prophet figure could be fulfilled in him or just absolutely the ushering in one of the these last kings in Revelation and absolutely the prophecy of Mystery Babylon. Worth noting is that I did read that there were some people saying, well, because the sentences were separated, there could be a gap between the last pope, the pope referenced in St. Malachi's prophecy of the olive and then Petros Romanus, the last pope, and that's just mentioned by a couple different people who've studied this. But of course, it really just makes more sense that it would go in sync and that it just after the 111th would be the 112th, which would be Pope Francis. So my point in mentioning that is to not fear. We aren't supposed to fear the end times, nothing to fear. Put your trust in Jesus. You don't need the church to tell you exactly what to do. Of course, you're supposed to be part of a body of believers. But if you're believing, if you're reading the Bible, if you're believing the Bible and growing in a relationship with Jesus, that's how you get close to God and grow with him and then get connected into a body of believers who are also Bible believing Christians. So do that. That's important no matter how long or how short of a time we have. That's an important thing for us to be doing. So grow your relationship with Jesus. Start it today if you haven't already. Start praying to him and reading the New Testament and you will be amazed at what will happen in your life. I can pretty much promise you that because the word promises it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching and God bless.